Right, well, hopefully we are live. I'm a bit quiet in my my ear. If you wouldn't mind uh, giving me, as long as I'm not clipping, that's that's all right. I don't want to be too loud. Uh, just turn my ears up. Why can't I hear myself very well? Uh, just a whisker. You get used to hearing yourself, don't you, on your um, on your ear cans, cans, whatever you want to call them. A very good day, everybody. Uh, if I'm looking over here, that's because I have my control world. I want to get one of those stream decks or something anyway. Uh, well, a lot of people have just watched the premiere. Uh, that's the video before this one. And if um, maybe one of the moderators could find a link to that and put it in the live chat to save me doing it, that would be fine. But a few people have asked some questions. Where's Andy Cowley? Good point, actually. The auto... Uh, do you need all those radials? I have a very, very... Thank you, Duncan. Radials. Okay, well, we'll do that. I've got my um, little notebook here. Somebody who wanted all those radials. So I'll just make a note. All those radials. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so if you've landed here and you're not quite sure what we're doing, is uh, Duncan's put a link to the original live stream, and it's just got some questions. I have made uh, three videos today that are currently in edit that will answer some of this stuff anyway. So let me just go uh, straight on. Oh, Jimbo's had his spanner privileged removed, so add moderator. Jim's now a mod. Right, so where do we start? Uh, yeah, is my, is my audio okay? That's all. As long as it's not clipping, then you guys can turn the volume up, can't you? And there's Tyler. Tyler, I need to book a Zoom call with you, mate. Just a few things in my mind we need to, to get on. So let me just check that camera can see at least the left-hand side. Sounds good, says Andrew. Right. Um, so 9.5 launch. So we've got a um currently all our antennas need a guying system but the 9.5 signature won't need guys so you'll dig a hole in the ground you'll put a thin walled aluminium that's important because that's got a bit of give in it about 18 20 inches i don't know 45 centimeters into the ground if you just let it set you won't need even any concrete because that's what i did i don't i don't need any concrete at all and um, and you'll find when you slip over, you've got to be the right size. I can't remember. I'll detail it. I think it's 38 millimetres. It will slip over the top and uh, you will have a antenna that you don't need any guys. And I know that's that's been holding a few people up. And that launch is about three months now because it's just about to leave China. And um, about two weeks time. It's about seven weeks on the on the boat. Seven, eight, nine it arrives i'll measure it test out my idea all i'm going to do is i'm going to transplant the original classic onto it so it'll be fine so that answers that question uh location so a couple of people were worried about um the location of their dx commander now i have seen a lot of photographs um of some very strange locations um, of where people have put DX commanders. And what I'm going to say, if they're unsure, they send me a photo, because in the main I can go, do you know, that's just going to work. Because trees and most buildings are fairly invisible to your average HF station, okay? got a super massive building within a wavelength i'm i'm sure you'll get some problems um but probably more on receive than on transmit stealth okay so let me talk to steve i've got a number of customers that have got got we're talking location now their antenna could be like a hustler or whatever fairly close to a tree all right one of the bands 
I've never done it myself, and I've, I've put it right next to trees. I've just never had a blooming problem. But apparently some people have had small issues where one of the bands has been difficult to tune, probably because of the water in the tree. Not, for, not the big bands, the money bands, 40, 30, 20, 17. I've never, ever had a customer with a problem with them. I have had one customer last week, and I supported him on WhatsApp to over two nights, and he eventually... It was he was getting six, five, four to one SWR, and it turns out the reason was is he hadn't connected the radials, and so he was so embarrassed. I mean, it was still kind of working, but he hadn't connected the radials. Now I've done that test myself, and uh, to be frank with you. Um, I got, and I was running a 36 metre, what's that, just over 100 feet of coax, and I had about 3 to 1 SWR. Back to my rig, you see. It did work. And Ian, G0CNN, he ran a whole weekend without the radials, but he was right next to the sea. Because if you've got an exceptional ground anyway, your length of coax will probably just be enough to, to make make you forget, oh, God, I didn't have my radios connected. He didn't notice much of a difference at all. You haven't seen the pic I'm going to send you in the morning. Okay, I'll have a look at that. So, Steve, don't worry about your, um, your tree. Right, you also heard on Friday morning, and he calls in most Friday mornings, I think, I can't remember his call sign, Ocean Echo something, I think it's Marcus, and I published his picture on the DX Commander Instagram page. And he has um, put his 12.4-metre uh, expedition, and he's put that on his garage roof. Okay, so it's about three metres off the ground. I think he used the radials that we supplied, you know, uh, just a lot of short ones. And he's getting out. That's the only space he had. Uh <laughs> I'm <laughs> just reading Jim's comments. He had a customer who kept having motor vaults on the machine, and it turns out he hadn't connected it. <laughs> so that's the garage roof. And I don't want to tell people to try and see, because that seems a ridiculous thing, but I originally said I've got no idea if putting it on a roof will work. It, it turns out that the ground isn't far enough away so you're not, it doesn't think you're using raised radials. So what I'm trying to say is, if you're only three metres off the ground, the ground isn't far enough away for it to be elevated, like a quarter of a wave off the ground. It's close enough that it couples to the ground, like a mag mount would on top of your roof, your VHF antenna. That's what I think is happening. Uh, so somebody, and I, sorry, I, I missed your name in a comment. Uh, I'm just dialing into my mixer. I know what it is. I know what it is. Why well, I can't hear myself very well. Oh, that's better. I like to hear everything. By the way, my mixer looks like this thing. It's a bit boring because I'm only on that channel there. But that's the mixer I'm using. Okay, Christiana. Apparently one of my um, one of my favourites, Christiana. So, oh, it's not on YouTube anymore. I did a test, if you remember, a lot of you might remember, and this is the test where we took two meter long, so six foot long radials on twenty meters, and I got a perfect tune. And that's the one I did the key down test, uh, sixty five seconds at uh, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen hundred watts. Uh, a lot of people looked and went, oh, my God, does that actually work? 80 metres runs perfectly well on three and a half metre long radials, 80 metres. So if you convert that by half, 40 metres would work on, well, five, yeah, five, six foot, even in 180 degrees, by the way. It'd still work. So if you're in a mobile caravan park or something, you can put some radials under the, under the, um, under the house, you know. Anyway, one long radial um, in addition to all your other radials. Because what I hear quite a lot is people saying, oh, I can't get... I mean, I couldn't get a tune on 80 metres very well in the field. And that was my environment. 
that's because I've got a lot of, lot of metal fences. And I spoke offline to Roly and Mike and Tom and maybe Tim as well. And Roly suggested try four quarter wave radials to get it to resonate on 80 metres. I tried it, it didn't make an iota bit of difference. Okay, Max, uh, he put his uh, DX Commander Classic in the corner of his backyard. Radials running to the west and south was all he could do. And he chose the 80 metre configuration and I get signal reports. Great signal reports, that is, says Max. So there's a man with 90 degrees, so fine. So the benefit of adding uh, this uh, one long radial, where am I looking? One long radial, I wouldn't be bothered with, okay? Discounting, personally. Not connecting radials we've done. Very dry ground. So this is the opposite of exceptional ground, okay? Where you get um, a tent, you, you, so start again. So I'm in the UK, you know, where we can grow crops, all right? I think you're a bit too far over there. In other words, you know, we get some moisture in the ground. Now, if you're in the arid desert, and by the way, I've got a number of customers. Tyler, you're on the stream. Perhaps you can tell us, Tyler, you get some rain, rain and storms sometimes, but I think you're in Arizona, aren't you? I mean, some of the times it's really dry. And with those, that's him. With, with the radials out, does it work? Yes, it does, he says. So, so there we are. But I think hopefully uh, Tyler's got quite a few radials out because I remember years ago I spoke to a guy in Cyprus who lived on a rock, basically, in the mountains. He didn't have any rain ever sort of thing. And um, I can't remember what he did, but he complained about... I mean, this is before DX Commander even existed. Uh, he, he, put his, he put a vertical on a tower right with raised radials and convinced himself that was better uh okay so tyler says yeah it works awesome all right tyler uh <laughs> mark thinks he's learned the law of diminishing returns mate so have i i've got 32 on average 12 13 meter radials and this year i was going to put another 32 out but after looking at the chart which we showed on the live stream I mean, what's the blooming point uh, oh, somebody wanted to know this one, the, the optimum height for a loop antenna. That's right. Well, it depends if you want to transmit or receive. If you want, just want to receive, well, it depends on the reason why you've got the loop, doesn't it? If the reason you're running a loop is because you've got high noise level, then what you want to do is reduce the loop's height as low as possible. And I wonder if it's worthwhile me sketching this out. We'll give it a go and see what happens. So um, let's put the book like this. Hopefully, if I just move the microphone a tiny bit, you should be able to see this. So we've got this building here, okay, which is causing some RF. Okay, now we know that, that a low-to-the-ground antenna will produce most of its RF going kind of straight up in a funny sort of way. So if you're, um, this RFI, this crap that is coming off this house that's got fairy lights and LED lights and everything else across the spectrum, the RF will be coming off like, like this, okay? Very little of it will be going straight out that way because of the nature of RF, right? Because if it's producing RFI, that means it's an antenna and it's producing RFI. If you can hear them on 40 meter band, that means a lot of the RF is going straight up because it's just like any other antenna. So this bubble of RF is, is typical. So if we've got a vertical here, our vertical, any RF that is coming off this we're going to pick up pretty well because, as we know, our vertical. Uh, whatever. Oh, well, that's turning out quite well in the end. Our vertical is doing quite well left and right. OK. Low to the ground. Um, less uh, inclination, whatever. So if we've got a low to the ground loop 
very low to the ground, that will also be trying to pick up very low to the ground, like within a foot or 30 centimetres, then that will be trying to pick up uh, RF that's coming down. So if we're, we've intentionally designed an antenna to have its maximum gain above, let's say, five, six, seven, eight degrees off the horizon and, uh, and further, then the house next door that's pr producing the crap, you're less likely to pick it up on your loop antenna than you are on your vertical. As a whole video, in fact, a whole, probably a whole book there. Saying all that, if you've got a street light at 30 feet or 10 meters, that will be generating a lot of RF and some of it will be coming straight down. There's not a lot you can do about it, as you've discovered at Holly Farm, if you ever listened to my live streams then. Uh, a lot of the 40 meters. It's not, it's not unusable, it's just annoying. It sounds like frying bacon. So something within couple of hundred meters three uh, six seven hundred feet of my station I've got something that generates noise can I be bothered to fix it mm. no because what I might do is is do a test one day and go another hundred meters out into the middle of the sheep field and put a loop under the ground and see how bad it is there and if that works I will buy a hundred meters of underground cable dig a trench and put an underground loop in the middle of the field, as far away from Holly Farm as I can. Uh, just read the chat here because uh, Christiana, question, Cal, what if I put the radials under the grass? I live in a southern uh, Oregon. Also, do the radials have to be straight or can I bend them at angle? Uh, bend them around, do what you want. Under the ground's okay, up to about two inches, apparently. Then they actually start losing their ability to reflect and be the other side of your world if you need to shorten use foldback method will allow you to get the result you want says peter i actually wouldn't do that although it would still work instead of shortening my radials just like rudy sevens so in case you missed this on the live rudy what rudy sevens did is his he built this test rig and let's just put one two oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he put these eight quarter wave. He did 16, 32, four, none. He did all these tests. And then at the end of the test, he thought, well, that's really interesting. I've got all these results. He cut these in all in these in half and added them back into the system. So it's the same amount of copper, but... Um, less less size and uh i can't remember what the result was i mean it was minuscule okay he i think he was quite surprised as well i can't remember the number it was beyond best better than like 0.1 db so that was eighth of a wave i've gone down to 16th of a wave so eight 20 meter band that would be 18 9 i've gone less less than that i've gone less than 16th of a wave and it still works again what is the definition of work well enough, right? I know you want your 100 watts to go as far as possible. Will it work? It seems to me as if the word, will it work, is like you'll get 100% output. You'll never get that anyway. Most of your signal's going where you don't want it, all right? The only reliable way you can get your signal to, to do there is a pair of three or four stacked Yagi's at 200 feet and then you know your signal is going to him trouble is you won't hear anybody else all right and you've got to wait 30 seconds to get around there's a couple of contest stations that use big tower and all that and they've got a switch a dx commander because it's instant tune the difference is about 10 db between their big stack and the dx commander 10 db they're already 30 30 db over s9 anyway you know because they're running 1500 watts Click the DX command and make the contact. They don't even have to move the tower. How about that? Oh, there's a few chats come in. Uh, might actually be someone frying bacon. That's <laughs> says Brian. I was told one well, not to bother with radials, but to get a couple of rolls of chicken wire. Now, Mike Whiskey 7 OFS. There is somewhere on. Eham, I could, I tried to find the article again. I don't know if it's been taken down or whatever else, but uh, somebody put some chicken wire, it's years ago, 
somebody put some chicken wire down and after a couple of years they did some fault finding because they could hear this clickety click going on worse much worse than my bacon frying on a friday morning it was the chicken wire it was rusting and there was no way of getting rid of it because it is rusting and it's in the ground and every time one of the molecules goes and converts itself into iron oxide it's going click or crack or whatever so i'd be very careful about putting steel in the ground there was a contestation Ooh, whiskey three lima papa lima or casey one xx and they put i don't know miles of copper a copper grid and they actually silver soldered every copper wire in like a one foot square it was for their top band vertical completely nuts you've got to be nuts i'd either put copper in the ground or something that doesn't oxidize and make a noise like iron or steel so there we are uh i think i've covered everything hopefully that's been some fun for you if there's any other questions i'll read the q a and just to see or read the comments just to see if you don't mind i'm just gonna take a drink We're still working on a 10 meter 5 8 and 30 meter in one element. So, Andreas, Andreas Rinke. Right, so let's uh, cover this one. No, I haven't been, but you've just rekindled uh, uh, something in me here. So, yeah, okay, so. If that is a 30 metre element, which is about, funnily enough, with copper wire, it's not 7.5 metres. I think I remember, I'd have to look it up. I think I remember that 6.8 metres long. However, that would be resonant at 10.1 megahertz small z. So if we multiply that by 3 which and a bit, which is its next resonant frequency... That would be next resonant at somewhere around um, probably 31 megahertz. All right. <sighs> so difficult to get to the two. But you've given me an idea. I'll have to think about it and sleep on it. What would be better is... <sighs> right. So we could build, you could parallel next to that a three-quarter wave for 10 meter band at say 28.5 which is far enough away from 31 that it would it would probably work and they would probably independently work thinking about it the problem about the 30 meter band and 10 if you've got an antenna which let's say let's say you really wanted to get 30 megahertz and this is already resonant at 31 this one here and you put a quarter wave that should be resonant at 30 megahertz, what you'll find, this one at 31 being a three-quarter wave, gives such a good match, or better match, It I've, I've discovered it time after time, your quarter wave is ignored for quite a wide bandwidth before it starts working. Uh, does it matter if some radials are different lengths? No. That's fine. Is it okay to use bare wire on the ground? If, yes, why not? Does it matter if some radio is different? I've done that. Loving my classic. Four new DXCCs first weekend, says M. Newkirk. Oh, top banana. Um, I must be radio man. I've got 3,000 so far, 10 metres long. I need help. I've gone mad. Brian, we can send the doctors. Is there any particular UHF frequency to find power line fault with a Yagi? Let me just read that again. Is there any particular UHF frequency to find power line fault with a Yagi? I don't know. My problem is the noise from the electric fence on the farm next door, says Norman. Ugh. Yeah. So there we go. Uh, what else can I tell you? What else is coming up just before we um, we go? I'm, I'm recutting all the foundation videos for UK amateurs. 
I've got a whole new series of MMANA. It's in the in the can, gradually editing it. And um, I did a nice one on. Um, I, I I once did in the old channel, uh, Idiot's Guide to Decibels or something, and I've kind of done that. It's much shorter, much faster. I think it's only six minutes. I've just finished editing that before this. Have you ever considered, compi considered compiling a book of your findings while you're experimenting and developing new products? I have thought about a book, yes. Uh, how about slope antennas? Marcel, uh, just explain about the slope. The slope of the ground or the antenna is sloping? Because I've got some opinions about that. Um, in fact, in the main, you will find that, I mean, I could prove it to you. It would be fun, actually, to, to do. Um, I think I can do this. Uh, oh, actually, we could, uh, you know, you can have me as well. Uh, X, Z, um, Z2. Uh, let's make this for 40 meters. 10.2. Wire one base. That's all we need. 7 megahertz, I think. Calculate. Oh, I can't find a base of this. What have I done with it? Do I need to calculate? There we are. Start. Uh, no coax. Wire one base. There it is there. We must be off the ground. Add height. No loss. Free space. Real. That was the problem. There was no ground. Okay, so we know that a straight vertical gives us this sort of uh, this sort of look. But now let's let's slope it. Let's slope the antenna. X. That'll do. We'll just slope it. That is ten point two meters long. So roughly ten point two meters. That'll do there. Or oh, maybe back a bit. Yeah. Oh, it's in between the two. About there. Nine point. Okay. 10.3, that'll do. So now we've got a 40, roughly a 45 degree slope. SWR will change because parts of the antenna are now 7.2. 7.2. And now let's have a look at the far field plot. So the direction of X, X is to our right. So we've got a tiny bit more. To, it's a bit like an inverted L. You see that? That is very much inverted L. And sure enough, I mean, it's kind of inverted L, really, isn't it? Uh, what have we got down here? And down there. Five. So we've lost a bit in the opposite direction of the wire, and we've gained 1 dB in the direction of the wire. Uh, too many buttons here. So that was interesting, isn't it? What's the upcoming plans for the antenna after the 7.5 has gone out the door, says Andy. That is Project Lightning. And that's all I can say. And it will take me at least a year to do that. And it might even be a different company. Hi, Cal. I just want to say hello. Hope you have an amazing Sunday. We are. Thank you. Thank you. Have you considered your compiling a book? We've done that. How about Slope? Done that. So it doesn't matter if the, if you get the slope on the ground, right? You still get the same, roughly the same plot, or the slope on the antenna. Any thoughts in effect on inverted EV mounted on a house roof and not in free space? Peter, it is kind of in free space, because particularly inverted V, you know, 40, 30, 20 metres. I know some parts of the house are going to interact with it, but not by more than 3 dB. I laid my radials north and south. Would the antenna transmit east and west better? Would it make it more directional? Hand band it. Your north and south will be about normal, and your east and west will be half a banana less. I wouldn't worry about it. So Tyler, K7TDM, wants to come up with something for top band. So do I. Actually, maybe that might be next. Maybe we'll do something for top band. Maybe we'll do a low, low band antenna. Like 80, 60, 40, 80, sorry, 160, 80, 60, 40, something like that. That'd be fun. There is some difference 
but if you use pure copper with insulation. Uh, Q-tips. Ins insulated wire just has a slightly different velocity factor. In other words, when uh, if you do the calculations, um, so velocity factor. Why is it so? Okay, um, <laughs> too many things at once. I hit that and that again. You can see what I'm doing. So let me get my calculator out. We can do 300 divided by 7.2 megahertz and to get the answer at 41.666. Four, oh, 41.66. Okay, now we divide that by 4. And the answer is 10.4 equals 10.4. So why isn't an antenna, a quarter wave antenna, 10.4 meters long? Because it has, with insulation on it, because it has something called velocity factor. So if we go back to our calculator and multiply that by about 0.93, we will get roughly how long a quarter wave, nine. 9.6875. We will get roughly how long our quarter wave needs to be. Now, even a real copper, right, has a velocity factor as well. So you can't rely on that. But if you multiply most of your calculation by 0.93, you will get um, you will get roughly the accurate um, uh, result. Low bands. Will work for antennas, says Tyler. Tony F, I have a DX Classic, interested in signature 12.4. Do I gain much more DXing with the additional height or just 80 meters? Uh, you will get, Tony, two things. You'll get a purer pattern on 80 and an exceptional, for some reason, we are have, getting an exceptional pattern on 30, right? So you get you get both bands. An exceptional band on on um, on thirty, so you get all the bands right. Where in the classic, you've got to choose between eighty and thirty, haven't you? And eighty is a compromise because it's inverted L. Did you get my QSL card? K eight J A Z. Tony, I seem to remember getting a QSL card, and I think it was from you. And I apologise if I've done nothing about it. Um, if that was to M zero X X T, then also use the electronic version because then tim will send you a qsl card in return i'd be keen on a low band antenna as of a tri-band yagi for 2015 and 10 says norman ah lovely yeah i think a low band i mean there's a number of people who'd like a low band special but you see getting on a low bands is normally quite easy isn't it it's just a bit of wire and a couple of trees normally okay so hopefully that has been uh, inspiring for you um i'm kind of over the shock now of uh, losing channel number one uh it's been annoying more than anything else i did spot something in my email and got so embarrassed i hit the delete button because it was over the 28 days where i could have double appealed or something <laughs> because it was in junk um so maybe we could have got the old channel back after all but whatever we're back in business it hasn't impacted sales the move's going really well and uh, I seem to be a happy bunny. Hopefully, I'm looking relaxed these days. I seem to be uh, quite nice being out the manic YouTube uh, pressure that I used to feel. No progress on fighting that. Well, I've given up. I'm, I don't, I'm not bothered. Uh, also, uh, hopefully, you've enjoyed this. I've changed everything around here, okay? Which is why you get a different view from here now. Uh, so I might put another advert on band mix and see if I can put another band together and have some fun here. That would be good. Lovely. All right. Well, with that, I'll say cheerio. Good night. Yes, the lighting is it's just working well. It took me a while. Um, if you live in England, you'll know that Sainsbury's do a nice orange bag. So I took a piece about that size, cut a hole in it, and I've got some outside... Uh, floodlights for a garden and I've made my own soft boxes with the to give me the uh, the complexion back there's a lot of white light in here as well and it took me a while to sort the cameras out so I wasn't so purple as I used to be 
Hope everything is well, Cal. I asked you a while ago if you approve of me using the DX Commander logo on my QSL card. Rodney, do it. That's absolutely fine. I don't care. You'll just, uh, you know, if you're proud of it, and I know you are, Rodney, so that's that's great. Take it easy, Cal. Just a hobby. That's incredible, says Gord. Hope to catch you on the band, says Norman. 73, Marcel. Bloody Sainsbury's bag, says Gord, yeah. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Everybody's saying cheers. So I'll say 73 and I hit a button here and it's all over. Next time I'm live will be next Friday morning. Oh, wait a minute. It's the Queen's Jubilee weekend. Maybe we'll go later, like at midday or one. OK, well, we'll see about that. Hopefully this button, it's been so long since I've lived from in here. Hopefully this button still works. We're about to find out. Uh, good night to you. button.